So what kind of uh, sources of fuel uh, is there? So there's chemical rockets, liquid solid gas, hybrid, uh, there's electric. So what what are the kinds of fuels we're talking about? What are oxidizers? What what what? Can you just explain your shirt? I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the components in your shirt. <laughs> so, uh, so really, I mean, fuels. It's there's kind of two terms. Well, you'll generally hear the word propellant mm -hmm. being used. It's anything that is used to propel a spacecraft or, or used in a rocket engine. So, um, you have to have you know you can have a fuel. You have to have a fuel, you have to have an oxidizer, and you have to have a spark to actually get those things burning. And that's just a general law of like the universe. You have to have fuel, an oxidizer, and a spark. Um, now, some fuels will by themselves spark, like hypergolic fuels, but ultimately you're, you're always left with some kind of fuel, oxidizer, and a spark. So um, the, the general ones used most often in rockets, liquid oxygen is kind of the king of, well, there's better oxidizers, but they're extremely, extremely hard to work with like fluorine, um, but the, generally liquid oxygen. So you just chill oxygen down to its liquid state minus 183 degrees Celsius. Um, so it can be dense enough to store in tanks. You know, it's a thousand times more dense when it's in a liquid than it is as a gas. Um, RP1, which is basically kerosene, um, is a very common fuel. Uh, another common fuel nowadays is methane, liquid methane. Um, liquid hydrogen is another, it's the most efficient potential for the most efficient since it's uh, one of the lightest molecules. So if, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, uh, Falcon 9 uses kerosene and then uh, Starship uses methane, yep, liquid for, methane? Yep, for fuel. And they both use li liquid oxygen for their oxidizer. Well, for their oxidizer, okay. Yep. Um, but then, you know, if you get into hypergolics, you'll normally have nitrogen tetroxide, um, which is your oxidizer and some form of hydrazine for your fuel. Um, there's solid rocket propellants, like solid rocket boosters, and those are actually pre-mixed. Your oxidizer is inherently like baked, literally like kind of baked into the sludge of, of fuel. So like for SpaceX, it's all, uh, liquid chemical fuels. liquid fuels. Yep. Yep. So how many solid based, uh, fuels are there? Is that, are they still being used today? Is there most rockets? Yeah. Like, and the United States aware? really is the only ones that, well, the only ones that, I guess, early on, because it was really just the Soviet Union versus the United States. The United States started to use solids pretty early on. Uh, they're simple and easy, but these days, like, you know, you'll still see them kind of as traditionally like boosters, like they're used to just, uh, help get something off the ground or help give it a little extra boost. Um, so the space shuttle famously had those two huge white solid rocket boosters attached to the orange fuel tank. Those are solid rocket propellants. Um, things like the Atlas V can have up to five smaller solid rocket boosters. There's very few rockets that use a pure, uh, at least these days, that use a pure solid rocket motor for its first stage. Um, mm -hmm. There still are, especially in China, there's a lot of startup rocket companies that kind of use just missile technology. You know, they might use like a, there might just be a variant of an ICBM um, that just use solid rocket fuel because it is very, relatively easy to develop, you know, model rockets use solid rocket motors and stuff like that. So they're, they're still around, but they're just not as elegant and not as, uh, yeah, not as, as used these days.